Hello uh, students and dear friends once again i uh, came in front of you with uh, uh, my new video on synthesis of nanomaterials and uh, the synthesis of nanomaterial is by physical technique so there are as i told uh, in my previous uh, video that uh, there are three different kind of uh, methods or the techniques by which the nanomaterials can be uh, designed or the nanomaterials can be uh, synthesized prepared is a physical method chemical method then a biological method so physical method is most of the times called as uh, the top down approach because from bigger size to smaller size we are coming from a uh, uh, bulk or the lump material to a small nano size particle we can come and in a chemical technique we come from the small uh, atoms or the molecules to uh, the desired molecules so today uh, i am speaking about the physical technique uh, synthesis of nanomaterial so this uh, slide i already shown but uh, let me explain you in a uh, in a while that nanomaterial synthesis as i told you physical chemical and biological method biological aspect uh, of the synthesis method is uh, called as green synthesis wherein we are using the natural uh, ingredient or natural plant plant elements uh, parts of the plant that is stem leaves latex flower seeds etc or sometime bacteria fungi and yeast also so today i am explaining uh, about the physical method so where in the mechanical method is there vapor deposition so i'll be talking on vapor deposition particularly physical vapor deposition method where pvd which is in short called as pvd so sputtering laser ablation and laser pyrolysis and in mechanical method the mechanical milling attrition we can call it as so as i told you that uh, the top down approach where in the physical method so from a big size uh, material to a small size we can move and we can build from the small blocks or atoms or molecule by molecule or cluster by cluster cluster is something about uh, some 100 to 2000 molecules or atoms come together and form a cluster so that is a cluster so then uh, in a top down uh, uh, top down approach we can see the chemical etching laser ablation ablation mechanical uh, milling or ball milling sputtering electro uh, explosion in a bottom up approach from bottom means from small atom to atom we can proceed further so sol gel is one of the technique which is been widely uh, used for uh, uh, when we want the yield to be in a large amount then spray pyrolysis atomic molecule condensation aerosol process and then as i told you the green synthesis this is something is called as a biological method wherein microorganism and plant parts we can use for the process so here in uh, this video i'll be explaining you today uh, some uh, nine different kind of the uh, methods by which the nano particle or nano material that can be designed so of which these nine methods are very important method and mostly widely these methods are use of which the high energy ball milling then melt mixing physical vapor deposition ionized cluster beam deposition laser ablation laser pyrolysis sputter deposition electric arc deposition and photolithography so let me start, let us start with the first type of the method that is high energy ball milling so as you can see in this uh, pictures that there are some small kind of the balls are there of different size and the material that will be put forth and that will be placed in a box so this can be rotated vertical and as well as the horizontal rotation that will be given so that the material will come in contact with the ball in between the gap gap between the balls and they, that gives us and this complete this is a rotation or this is vertical and horizontal different kind of the ball mills are there so it produces a nano material and this process is used for producing a metallic and a ceramic nano material so in particularly for producing a nano particle of metals or the ceramic this that this can be used and uh, uh, maybe sometime uh, a carbide or a steel uh, ball a spherical ball that has been used the ball mill rotate around a horizontal axis as you can see uh here also you can see this is rotating about the horizontal axis with a field material to uh, be ground plus the grinding medium so medium here in this case depending upon what kind of the material that will be using the balls rotate with the high energy inside the container and then fall on the solid with the gravity force and the kinetic and hence 
the crush the solid into a nano crystalline site but there is a limitation in this method that we cannot um, reach beyond a certain particular uh, size because there is a limitations for in the grinding method okay then there is another kind of the method is there that is called as a melt mixing method in which the uh, generally this is been used for a polymer generally we can use a polymer or preparing a clay nano composite of or the thermoplastics we can say that typically a polymer is melted and combined with the desired amount of intercalated clay using bunbury or an extruder extruder or bunbury that can be used for this so melt bending is carried out in the presence of a inert gas the inert gas is required for this and generally the argon or nitrogen or neon but most of the times the argon gas that has been used the polymer may be dry mix first of all the polymer you can see over here two different polymers are mixed together and then they are melted together and then they will be mixed up thoroughly and then that will be passed to the next chamber wherein they will be coming out as a homogeneous discharge and after that it will be taken away which is been cooled and then whatever desired pellet forms or whatever form that is been required so that will be converted into that kind of the form so in melt bending uh, has a great advantage over the in situ intercalated polymerization because it has uh, the potential in industrial application the melt bending process that becomes a very popular so this is generally used in the industry for preparing the large uh, quantity of the material or nano composite the third kind of the method that is called as a physical vapor name uh, physical vapor deposition method the name itself gives you an idea that in this method the uh, the material that can be vaporized and then it will be deposited on the substrate you can see here the neutral gas that has been used so that it will not react with the uh, the residual gas then uh, the vapors that will be created and that will be allowed to settle down on the substrate so sometime uh, the, the vacuum deposition it is also called as a vacuum deposition because we don't allow any other residual gas to enter into it so that there should not be any kind of the impurity so pvd is used for the generally for the metal metal we can say that dielectric that can be used for uh, prepared with the help of the uh, physical vapor deposition then in this case the evaporated atom travel through the evacuated space between the source and the sample so here you can see the the material that will be coming over from this evaporator so that will be coming out so from here also it will be coming from here also it will be coming and then they will stick to the sample or we can say that a substrate that will be placed over here and this complete chamber will be vacuumed so surface reactions usually occur very rapidly and there is a very little rearrangement of the surface atom after sticking so thickness uh, uniformly and shadowing by surface topography and step coverage are the issues so there are certain issues certain drawbacks related with this is something about the topography and uh, we require the uniformity maybe sometimes you do not get the uniform thickness film so this is one of the disadvantage of the physical vapor deposition then the third kind of the fourth uh, probably ionized cluster beam deposition method here it is diagrammatically explained so in the ionization cluster beam deposition technique it can be classified into a ion assisted for the film formation in this case here we can say that there is a, a substrate wherein we can deposit the film of the material so from here the gas is allowed to pass through this uh, nozzle so nozzle can control the uh, size of the beam then there is a skimmer again it will allow and then this gas is finally allowed to enter into the ionizer and through this ionizer so uh, the condensation or super saturated vapor atoms produced by the adiabatic expansion process so there the expansion process that will be taking place through the ionizer once this ions get ionized through this ionization chamber then they will be accelerated towards the field, towards the substrate where the where we are trying to form the film and then here is a neutralizer also in this uh, in this case so the clusters are of the large size macro aggregate 
macro this is why i am telling you because 100 to 2000 atoms form by the pure expansion of the vaporized solid state material so whatever the material that will be there in the solid form so they will be vaporized the clusters are first partially ionized by the electron as i told you but they they get ionized by the impact of the electron and then kinetic energy they will be accelerated with the help of the accelerator added to the ionization cluster then in this uh, the capability of the field deposition is due to the cluster property because they form the cluster the uh, cluster means uh, typically uh, something about uh, 1000 to 2000 atoms that adhere together or stick together so they form the uh, kind of a lump you can say that but it is not exactly the lump which we imagine a small size a nano size you can say that and low energy beam transport in a range from a thermal energy to a few hundred electron volt so that will be done and then there is a magnetic filter so that will filter out then it will be neutralized and then finally this will be allowed to fall on the film so allow high in quality deposition and epitaxy of the material at the low temperature onto onto a wide variety of substrates and even permits the formation of thin film material which was not possible in case of the physical vapor deposition so because there is a problem uh, with the thickness in a pvd so now there is a fifth probably the fifth kind of the uh, technique laser ablation ablation means you can say that the etching up the taking up uh, the thing from that so laser ablation or a photo ablation is the process of removing material from the solid so generally you can see in in case of the welding the solid material by scrapping so it is not possible to scrap because that will create the scratches on the material so with the help of the ablation uh, the surface layer that can be removed it is possible so in this case also laser beam in a low laser flux so uh, flux uh, that will be used laser flux because having the high energy the material is heated by the absorbed la laser energy and evaporate and sublimates at a high laser flux in medical also the laser ablation that can be used for removing the tumors in the uh, in the inside the body so laser ablation refers to a removing material with the pulsed laser but it is possible to ablate material with the continuous wave laser there are two kind of the laser pulse laser and a continuous wave laser that is uh, been there so continuous wave laser that can also be used or pulse laser can also be used for removing the material so in case of a continuous wave pulse uh, wave laser not a pulse beam if the laser intensity is high enough then excimer laser of deep ultraviolet light are mainly used in photo ablation yes and the wavelength of the laser used in the photo ablation is something about 200 nanometer here also in this diagram you can see the laser beam that will be allowed to fall on the material and then the uh, the target is there and then uh, the plasma will be created and uh, you can say that the cavitation bubbles are formed and then we can uh, remove the material from the this and this is a focusing lens for the laser the sixth kind of the uh, technique that is been used is called as a laser pyrolysis pyrolysis means a pyro word itself is a temperature so in a typical laser pyrolysis process the gaseous phase precursor are introduced to a chamber by a carrier gas something like that the organ so here you can see the carrier gas gas will be allowed to pass into, into the chamber and then gas injection system will be there and then the confinement gas chamber will be there so and from the other side the laser that will be allowed the lens which can collimate the beam uh, pinpoint beam and then here the gas will be come into contact with the laser and the heat that will be generated out then after heating the gas molecules because of the, uh, the they will be converted with the, uh, into the gaseous phase precursor the high power laser beam about 2.4 kilowatt generate even elevated localized temperature so that will create a temperature temperature zone you can see from this diagram also the temperature various temperature zone will be created over there here it is a high temperature and then it reduces towards the uh, the tip of the flame so because of this which triggers the nucleation and growth of the nanoparticle here you can see a primary spray when they 
gas will be sprayed on this. So because of the high temperature, they, they get separated out and slowly in a high temperature range, the secondary droplets that will be formed and then the precursor and ultimately when the temperature comes down to a desired temperature, the nanoparticle or nanocomposite that will be formed. So nanoparticles are then collected by the catcher equipment with a filter. So there is some filter and then that, that will be collected into the bag. And then it, it is of course the vacuum mass. So laser pyrolysis is characterized as a gaseous phase process where the liquid reactants can be vaporized and turned into micro scale droplets. The technique mainly applied in, a, uh, in the thermal energy induced by high power laser such as the CO2 laser we can say that operate, operates which in a continuous mode and they can be used here. So then the uh, next uh, process is the sputter deposition. We all know what is the sputtering that with the help of a plasma the, uh, the charged particles that is being created and when the charged particles are created so that will fall over there and then finally they um, um, eject some electrons and then they can uh, eject with the help of them some atoms are also because of the uh, ionization and then they will be deposited on the sputter. So here you can see sputter deposition is something like that a vapor deposition because in this the charged particles so, so um, because of high temperature they, they will be uh, taking out some uh, atoms or the molecules from the uh, material whose we want to deposit and this they involve the materials from the target that is a source onto a substrate such as a silicon vapor. So most of the time the silicon that will be used because of its high uh, temperature resistance. So the sputtering is re-emission of the deposited material during the deposition process by the ion or the atom bombardment. So these at atoms are bombarded in this animation you can see over here and this they get collected. So argon gas that will be used for the, uh, the, the process for plasma. The sputter atom ejected from the target have a wide range of energy distribution typically up to the tens of electron volt. You can see 1 lakh uh, uh, K uh, is uh, the thousand uh, we can say that the energy range will be there. The sputter ions typically only a small fraction of the ejected particles are ionized. So in this case it is not been completely ejected but uh, some part of that will be ejected of the order of 1% can be basically fly from the target in a straight line and impact energetically on the substrate or the vacuum chamber causing re-sputtering also. Alternatively at high gas pressure the ions collide with the gas atoms that acts as a moderator and move diffusively reaching the substrate reaching the substrate or the vacuum chamber wall condensing after undergoing a random walk. So you can see over here after coming out from this material of which we want to uh, prepare the deposition with the help of this sputtering. Uh, thin film, uh, sputtering thin film that can be obtained here. So after coming out, so they can move over the substrate. Then the electric arc deposition method, is. this is a very beautiful method wherein what it has been done that high potential that will be applied between the cathode and the anode in the presence of the inert gas because it do not get reacted and then if this can be deposited over here because of the arc so cathodic arc deposition or the arc PVD physical vapor deposition is a technique in which an electric arc is used for heating so because it has a very high temperature vaporize the material from the cathode target. So here you can see a material is there in the cathode and then it gets vaporized because of the arc generation of the arc and then the vaporized material then condense on the substrate. Substrate is placed over there for forming a thin film and the technique can be used to deposit most of the time the metallic or ceramic or composite film. So this is a simple method Really the only requirement is uh, of course we require the vacuum so that the, uh, the residual gas do not get interact with the, uh, the because of this high um, potential. So it will be vacuumized this chamber and then with the help of the whatever that material so that will be attached to the cathode and because of the formation of this arc as you can see in this animated 
uh, mixture. So that will evaporate and then finally it will be collected onto the substrate. Then the last method may be probably a ninth method, photolithograph. Photolithograph means what? What is this process? Photo means you know photons are light. Lithography is the process of transferring any geometric shape on a mass to the surface of a silicon vapor. So silicon vapor that will be used. So this is the image we can say that it will be radiated with the help of the light and then the image that will be formed on the vapor then the photo, photo resist and then it will be developed. So here uh, it will be developed and these are the various stages that will be formed. So there are some stages or steps through which this process um, will be carried out. The first uh, the step is steps involves uh, in the photolithography process are vapor cleaning. So first of all we have to clean the vapor. Then barrier layer formation. So we have to form some certain barrier layer. Uh, then photo, photo register applications, then soft baking. So we have to uh, heat it, bake it softly. Then the mask alignment, we have to align the mask, whatever that mask is there, which will be protecting the other part of the substrate. And then, uh, then exposure to the light and then development. And finally, uh, once the image that will be formed, so that will be used after hard baking, means final heating. The uh, film uh, the, will be formed, or the image that will be in, engraved on the substrate. So this is how the photolithographic process. So these are the total nine different kind of the techniques which I tried my um, level best to explain you so that you can understand. And I put some uh, uh, animation into it so that it will be easier to understand. So whatever we read that cannot be written so very very less part of that will be written but when we see some visualization or when we, 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 pictures then the retain retention percentage that will be increased so this nine technique i explained of course there are so many techniques as i know there are about 21 plus techniques are there uh, for synthesis of a nanomaterial and these nanomaterials are synthesis as per the requirement or as per their application so whatever questions that you have in your mind, you can post your questions to my mail. This is rewatkark2 at the rate gmail.com or you can uh, subscribe my uh, YouTube channel in the name of Kishore Chandra. So you can subscribe and wherein you can see some other videos of mine also there. So this is my second video lecture on the nanotechnology. And in short, I will come with the third video on the nanotechnology. So I am I, I am trying to give you in a short video so that you can understand easily, you can see it. And uh, in case you have any questions, you are most welcome. So thank you very much. Thank you.